Hey, what's up guys? Tyler Stassi here at Western Welding Academy. In today's video, we're going to do a little pipe fitter stuff. This is how you calculate the end-to-end -end pup length measurement of six inch pipe. All right, so a couple tools that I really use when I'm planning the work before the welding ever starts. These are phone apps you can get. You can get them on an iPhone. Probably you can get them on an Android, but you should have an iPhone anyways. So first one that I use is called Piping Database Extreme. So Piping Database Extreme, it's just exactly what it sounds like. It's got the takeoffs for every flange, every fitting, bolt lengths. It's even got wrench sizes in it, torque specs. This is an incredible tool when I'm planning the work or figuring out how I'm gonna build something for the engineers. The second biggest tool that I use is the Construction Master Pro Calculator. This is a calculator that's gonna do fractions and it's got a bunch of stuff pre-built into it and a whole bunch of shortcuts that's gonna make your life as a pipe fitter and as a welder super easy, okay? So phone app, Construction Master Pro, it's not hard, you can find it, does fractions. When you read with your tape measure and you break it down into fractions, this is the calculator that you definitely wanna use. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you in this video is how to use these tools to find a pup length. All right, so a lot of your prints are gonna be an isometric view, but isometric view is just a one line drawing. This is what an isometric view is gonna look like on the prints. So we do a star, right? The isometric view star. This is always up, this is always down, and, and job north is gonna be somewhere. So if we say that's north, east, south, west, on the prints, it's just gonna have a line with an end through it. You gotta do the rest of it. Put the other parts and pieces into the puzzle, okay? So, isometric view, you're just gonna have a one line drawing but what that looks like in the real world, for some of you people that haven't actually got to see prints yet, is it's gonna have a piece of pipe goes up, it's got a 90 coming over, and it has a flange. A pup is this piece of pipe right here, between the flange and between the 90. Now this can be configured in multiple different ways. It could be 45 to 45, could be 90 to 90, it could be flange, flange, 90, 45. There's a thousand different ways this can be configured on a job. It's always gonna show up, generally speaking, in a one-line isometric drawing. These are what we call spool drawings that you fabricate piping off of. And the big thing to know, really, as a welder, this is the weld. Part of your job as a welder is to make these welds, make them good, make them clean, and make them within code. But there's a lot of work that's gotta take place to get to the point so you're building something properly and correctly. Figuring out what this piece of pipe is is gonna be a big part of working the plan, okay? The drawing is planning the work and doing a bunch of math once you have a plan. Then you can go back to work in that plan step by step by step. Hey, if you guys like this, go ahead and drop me a comment. Tell me what you wanna see me do next in the comment with the most likes. I'm gonna send you a free pack of isometric paper from Western Welding Academy. And it's a great tool you're gonna to need when you start going out there doing some pipe fitter stuff, doing some layout and getting ready for welding. Okay, the big thing to note here is the engineer, he's gonna spec this thing out, measure it from the face of this flange to the center of this pipe right here. Why do we always do the center of the pipe? And when I say center, I mean the center of the pipe. You don't have to worry about east, west, north, south. All piping always is measured from the very dead center of the pipe. So that's a big thing to really know when you're measuring out and planning your work. All right, so the big thing to note, we're, we're talking about the face of the flange to the center of the pipe. And the engineer is gonna give us a dimension from center to face. And just for easy math, I'm gonna say this is 10 foot six and three quarter inches. One of the mistakes that a lot of young welders and pipe fitters make 
is they tend to measure out something in inches. Well, if you come to me and you say, hey, I need a piece of pipe that's 280 inches long. Like, I don't know how long that is, but if you come to me and say, I need a 14 foot piece of pipe, in my mind, I can kind of visualize what 14 feet is. That's why when I draw my measurements, and I'm always looking for feet, inches, and partial inches. So the best way to do it is 10 foot, six, and three quarter. That would be like 126 inches and three quarter. Well, what's, I need a piece of pipe that's 126 inches long. Like, I don't even know what that looks like, but if you tell me I need something slightly over 10 feet, that I can do. So the next thing that we do, the next big critical component of this is what size pipe is this? And for simple pipe fitter calculations, I'm gonna say this is six inch pipe. Six inch pipe, it's got a six inch standard radius 90 and a six inch 150 pound flange. Some of this stuff you might not know, but flanges are always calculated by the flange weight. And the way that weight is measured is usually the thickness of the flange face. So if we call this 150 pound flange, we would go to our piping database extreme app and look at what this measurement is. Remember, we're trying to find what this measurement is. So we got to know what kind of flange it is and what kind of 90 it is. And it all starts with the pipe size. So simple enough. I go to my piping database extreme. I open it up. I hit the flanges. It says weld neck. This is a welding neck flange. It's 150 RF. That stands for raised face. It's a standard flange. And then I just scroll over here until I get to six inch. On this side at the top, the number is going to automatically populate the takeoff. So this distance right here is three and a half inches on six inch, three and a half inches. We figured out what the takeoff is for the flange. We got to figure out what the takeoff is for the 90. The thing with 90s is there's three kinds of 90s, but the most common is what we call a standard radius 90. SR, standard radius. Uh, and the way you calculate what the takeoff is, this one's real easy. You don't need a blue book. You don't need piping database extreme. If you know it's a standard radius, it's going to be one and a half times the pipe diameter. So we simply just take six, half of six is three, add those two together, 1.5 times the pipe diameter. This thing is gonna take off nine inches. So one of the big things when I'm doing my piping math is you need to keep everything in order. That way if you screw something up, it's all in order and it's all labeled. That was one of the biggest tricks that I learned in the industry. A lot of people do their math all over the place on, you know, the floor, the wall, some piece of scrap paper, but I don't really care where you do it as long as you keep it in order and you label everything. That way, if you make a mistake, you can always go back and figure out where you made that mistake because it's real clean, real precise. So this measurement that we would have got from the engineers is what we would call a center to face measurement. So we need to make sure when we're doing our math, we label that. All right, so we're gonna start with our center to face. 10 foot six, three quarter inch and label it center to face. Sometimes I just do CF. Okay. The next thing we need to do is take out for our flange and label it old pipe fitter trick. I just do FLG because I know it stands for flange. Next thing we need to do is take off for our 90. Boom. So we're going to take 10 foot six and three quarter. For you folks out there that are not real slick on the math, this is where the Construction Master Pro calculator really comes in handy. So I'm gonna take 10 and, and press the foot button, six inch, three quarter, minus three inch, one half, minus nine inch, equals nine, foot six and a quarter inches. We need to label this as well. This is our end to end or our pup. This is a real simple pipe fitter calculation. There's only two fittings to account for, but in more complex operations, you might have 10 fittings to account for. And if you got 10 fittings and you forget to take one of them off, that spool piece is not gonna fit. So that's why it's really critical when you lay it out, you label every move and double check your math every time. If you do it by a calculator, you know you punch the numbers in correctly. The other thing that I do 
is I always circle my pup links because it draws my attention down to it so I'm not likely to make a mistake when I'm out there measuring the pipe. So with that, we come up here, we got a pup end-to-end -end pup measurement, and I'm gonna label it nine foot six and one quarter inches pup. And I'm gonna circle it so it draws my attention so I'm not likely to make a mistake when I hook my tape measure on the end of the pipe. I'm gonna mark it, set my bell in the machine, Porta band, whatever I'm going to cut this pipe with, I know that that's right because I've circled it. By circling it, that's the biggest, most critical thing I've ever learned is circle your pup measurements. That's how you figure out how to figure out what a pup length is. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, tell your buddies about it. Right here, Western Weather Academy, the best pipe fitter advice you'll ever get. Booyah.